folks. How are you all doing? Hope everyone's good. All right. Let's draw. Let's start with a 12 minute pose. There we go. Okay. Hope everyone's good. And welcome new members. Hope you've been able to find the reference okay. If not, you will find a link in the community chat. Follow that link and uh, you'll find the reference. Cool, okay, 12 minutes. Kind of specific, I know, let's try. That's the timer. Let's find the axis of the shoulders. Upper, lower. Let's push a little bit. Center line. Supporting leg. It's coming down this way. We're only going to be drawing down to about the knee. Give or take. This leg is kind of not, let's, let's do things in order. Asus and green or ligament. Okay. This leg is kind of coming towards us. Sitting in there. And then this is going out this way. We drew this model a couple of times, as you may recall, towards the end of last year. I just really kind of like the overall proportions. And just, it's just kind of fun to draw playful poses. Arch of the rib cage, sitting in roughly in there. Ever so slightly coming towards us with her rib cage. It's really subtle though. Manubrium's going to be about there. Sternocleidomastoid coming this way. Head sitting about here. R eye line going right back. You can see under her chin. Sitting in there. The nose is up at the eye line. Okay. Clavicle. Arms going back in space. Something like that. I think this is probably needs to pull down a little. Let's see. Clavicle on this side. Once again, going up because this arm is also pushing back in this direction. Camille says, I like today's pose, it's very subtle. Yes, well, after, <laughs> after Monday, I figured, you know, let's not beat ourselves up twice in a row, huh? That was a rough one. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just, you know, Pick something just a little less involved. Oblique is going to be sitting in here. Like 
you know, I'm all for getting out of our comfort zone and all of that, but I took a beating on Monday. So anyway, pectoral muscle. Navel sitting about here. Compression on the oblique on this side. Sitting in roughly in there. Yes, I did. Thanks, Margot. I definitely uh, slept well that night. Yeah, perfect storm. Really goes to show also, I think, like, you know, uh, not that I, probably too many people are interested in this, but I follow, uh, I'm not a very good player, but I follow the professional chess circuit. I love watching the tournaments and that type of thing. And it's always amazing to see when a player is tired. I'm sure it, it's, it applies to pretty much everything that we do, but when a player is tired, how it can affect, um, how it can affect their play. And then, you know, you go on something called, you get tilt and it is a, it's real and you get to a point where you just you don't your your critical thinking completely goes out the window it's really quite fascinating it makes you wonder how it must affect doctors and pilots and people that we put our lives in their hands and you know that there's there's bad thing, bad decisions made with sleep deprivation. There's just no doubt about it. Anyway, it's not like I'm saying anything new, but you know what I mean. But yeah, I was just at a point on Monday where I felt at least like I just simply couldn't couldn't make a decent decision on anything. today will be a bit better. Now her hair is actually kind of coming down this way and obscuring the shoulder, so we'll, we'll follow that idea. says chess is great you sit at a table and lose a few pounds from stress it's an amazing workout um, yeah apparently so apparently when they play like the world championship or you know these big major tournaments chess players lose a lot of weight um, just through concentration which is really kind of crazy isn't it
gun here. Looking for cues from the reference about design language choices. Usually there's something on the model that will be an interesting thing to at least try and capture. Something I was actually thinking about recently is you know, how important developing design language is. It's, you know, it's funny because it's like, well, I think they ultimately come hand in hand, and I don't know if you can learn one without learning the other, so to speak, especially, well, in, certainly in figure drawing, but, you know, I almost think understanding design language is more important, especially at the early stages, than having a well-developed sense of anatomy. Because if you have good design language, or if you have developed a sense for design language, you kind of know, you, you get a really good sense of what it is you need to look for. And so I think it probably, on some level, you know, if you've developed design language outside of figure drawing, you're probably going to make faster progress just by virtue of knowing how to look at something. Okay, we're down to the last minute here. Said 12 minutes, didn't we? Okay. There we go. There's our 12. Donna, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yes, I'm well, thank you. Can't speak for everyone, but I'm going to say collectively we're well. Um, and very sorry to hear about your loss. That's devastating, really. Welcome back, welcome back. I hope maybe drawing can, or watching me draw, can be a little distraction for a few minutes. That's rough. Okay. We need a Duolingo for drawing design language. Margot, you have one. You're welcome. I just need an app. I think hopefully I, I give, can help develop a sense of you getting your design language together, you know? Um, hopefully through repetition and watching me through repetition, it helps develop some of that. If my design language is something that appeals to you, it may or may not be, but if it does, then hopefully something there is worth taking. Um, all right, next pose. The light is a bit weird. There you go. Light myself up there for you. All right. Um, let's go around the same amount of time, huh? 12 to 15, we'll say. It's a relatively straightforward pose, relatively. You know, relatively. <laughs> okay, let's find her shoulders. Never let your guard down with looking for that axis. 
the relationship between the upper and the lower torso. We've got this axis for the shoulders and we kind of got slightly kind of moving in the same direction but you know it's it's, it's quieter down here. This is actually going to be for the sacrum about there. Okay, so iliac crest coming up this way. You can see the oblique it's sitting there. I want to pop that in. You can see it on this side too, it's sitting right in there. This is another one of those relatively quiet back poses where we're going to hopefully add some visual interest um, with some, some anatomy that we know to be there that may not be quite kind of exhibiting itself. Oh, this is, this is fascinating, I think. I'm gonna share it with you guys. Um, Okay, so I was looking at this. For those of you who have the reference, you will notice a crease sitting right here. Right? Just here. And I was trying to, earlier today, I was trying to kind of dissect why we get a crease there. And I've seen it on many models somewhat consistently. I've come to a conclusion, so I'm going to share something with you. Um, I'm just opening my anatomy app here. Where is it? There we go. Okay, I'm going to go to a close-up camera. Um, and I think I've mentioned this app to, to you folks before. It's Essential Anatomy 5. I use it for well, I've, it's the, my, been my primary source of re reference for several years now, because um, you can expand, you can rotate, but here's what I love about it, is I can turn off a couple of muscles, and I'll turn it off a couple of layers of muscle. And that crease, I believe, is being created by these serratus muscles. Now, we normally talk about these these folks from the front, right, in the, sitting in here. And as you can see, you go around the form and you can see there's kind of an attachment point at the scapula right there. You can actually see them, how they attach to the scapula. Um, I believe they help stabilize the scapula, which is why we have them, right? But the point is, this, this muscle, this serratus, tends to be right where we're seeing it on the reference, we're seeing that crease on the reference. So even though the latissimus primarily, obviously completely obscures that, this is the latissimus obviously, um, trapezius doesn't really obscure it, but it's certainly coming in the way a little bit. Sorry, you're getting glare there. Um, so yeah, it's, I thought that was fascinating because I've, I've seen that crease many times and I refuse to believe it was just through virtue of the thickness of the skin or what was creating the crease. And I'm pretty sure it's that. So there you go. I learned that today. I always knew the serratus attached to the scapula, but I didn't realize the trajectory that they take around um, and how they seem to line up with that crease so consistently. Um, it's more fun than playing Operation with the grandkids. It's a wonderful app. It is a wonderful app. Yep, it's been my go-to for, as I said, for several years now. Um, it's why I'm reluctant to recommend anatomy books, um, because I find that the ability to rotate 
to turn on and off layers of muscle, to see things in relation to each other, like how does the latissimus come round to the front and attach to the humerus, you know, little things like that. You can do some detective work and you can see it and you can have complete clarity, well, relative clarity on what it is that you're seeing and what the relationships between each, other, each of them are. Um, so every now and then I'll, I'll open that, that app up and just kind of do some detective work. So, you know, in that, in that respect, I would say I'm very much still a student of anatomy, you know, like, um, yeah, very much so. It's nice to kind of be able to, you know, give, give confirmation to something that you think that you may understand or that you think is going on, or you find that you are completely wrong. And it can also give you clarity in that respect. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, so her hand is coming out, sitting here. I'll try and keep this app kind of handy a little more often during streams so that we can we can look at things together every now and then. Although I would certainly encourage you folks if you're if you're in the process of studying and learning, like it's not a cheap app. I think it's I, I don't recall exactly, but I think it's probably about twenty five bucks or pounds or whatever your your money is. Um, but I think it's well worth it, considering, you know, you'll pay that on an anatomy book that you're taking a chance with, you know what I mean? So I'm putting in the trapezius here, can't really see them, but look how they bring so much visual interest. Latissimus sitting in there. We can't actually see our model's head. Her ear would be about here. Face would be about there. Occipital ridge sitting about there. And the trapeze is coming down, but obviously her hair is obscuring all of that and coming down this way. This leg going away from us, sitting about here. It's also made me realize that my hand position is a little bit off. So now I've got a few things to kind of reconcile with. You know what I'm gonna do? Oh, let me move my camera back, apologies. There we go. There we go, all right, sorry guys. That's the danger. Um, although if I'm ever doing a really terrible drawing, can't promise that won't happen by accident. Get me out of a jam. I'm gonna lift this up a little, put a bit more foreshortening on it. I'm actually going, you know what, just in the interest of keeping the drawing clean, I'm just gonna put that arm coming down that way behind her, her leg there, it doesn't really matter. And we can see her foot 
sitting here. And then she's sitting on this box. And we can just see a little bit of perspective there. And we can't, her calf would be coming down this way. Okay. <laughs> These things happen, guys. What can I say? Okay. So far, so good. Deltoid. Yeah, that way. Go across to this. Just want to re establish that shoulder that seems correct to me. Why it's important is I want to find the distance. I think this crease of this arm is just a little bit higher. It's coming up this way. Then we're coming down to the tricep area and the connective tissue there. of this elbow sitting in there would we'll have suggest it like that and come down from the rounded area to the box like wrist sitting in there Find the oblique. And then we'll come up the rib cage coming up this way. So from the oblique, come down. We get that slight bump there from gluteus medius. And then coming down. Then a direction change right about there. See, 
be so easy to just want to curve this all in the same direction, but I've thrown in a very subtle straight right here, coming back to design language, right? Like, I think it's so important with figures to try and get away from the rounded form, ironically. Um, and I look for any opportunity to deviate from that and bring in different ideas for shapes. Because one of the biggest offenders I see in figure drawing is round against round against round against round. And it's, generally speaking, it tends to just not look great. comes back to that concept of kind of like learning to observe and learning to see. And the beginner wants to just put rounds in, thinking forms are round. And it's, it's so much more fun than that. Oh, we're at 16 minutes, yikes. All right, well, let's just keep going for a second here. Just for a second. Okay. Um, I'm in the mood to throw on a little bit of conceptual light. to make sure my pencil's going to cooperate. <coughs> I like how you handled the bottom of her left leg with the ankle. More clearly visible, it makes more sense for sure. Yeah, like, if, I'm sure if you bumped up the light on that, I know it's obviously it's in shadow, Margot. I'm sure if you bumped up the light that you would see the ankle there. It's just a small... So yeah, it's a small detail, it kind of helps, so, you know. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, Donna. Yeah, hit the like button. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Um, Emmy asks, what's your travel kit look like? Broken points of charcoal dust seem bad form for international flights. And the TSA really dislikes scalpels. Um, valid point. And I would say you're, you're right, uh, Emmy. Um, you know, honestly, here's the thing. Pencils, hand luggage. I don't really care how dirty they are or whatever, you know. Broken points and charcoal dust in bad form for international flights. Not really. You can keep it all in a con sealed container. It's, I've never had an issue with it. Uh, and scalpels, get, get, go and check luggage. And if you don't have check luggage, plan on finding a hardware store wherever you're going or an art store and pick one up. It's really kind of as simple as that. It, it, it doesn't have to be... Um, problematic um, you know that's obviously the bare essentials 
if I'm, if like, I can't remember the last time I traveled internationally where I had to bring drawing kit with me. I've done a few, I've done a few, um, you know, local-ish flights, Europe flights with art supplies um, in the last while. I'm not sure I've done international. Okay, I think I'm close to calling it with this one. Feels like a good place to stop. Without getting into a full tonal drawing. Yeah, 21 minutes, I think that Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. It took maybe a tad longer than it should have. I'm not drawing particularly fast today, but I don't really care. Um, it's a nice pose, isn't it? I, did, yeah, I agree. Lovely pose. comes back to, you know, the model kind of starting the conversation, right? There's a lot of quietness generally in this, in the back form of, of our model. We've maybe given it more detail than you can see, but you know, it adds something. All right, time for a quick sip of tea. Let's look at the next pose. Ah, standing side view. Should be a bit of fun. Just gonna clean my hand. I'll try and keep on top of the charcoal mayhem. All right. Okay. What do we have in front of us? Let's have a look. Yeah, so this pose and the next pose, the next pose after this one is probably gonna be the slowest pose of the session, would be my guess. So we can take our time with this one too. Let's, let's we can plan on maybe close to a 20. Let's see. A lot of the time it's just a case of it'll take as long as it takes. Yep. So professional of me, but that's the way it goes. Who's on tabla? Ask Jaeger. I don't know, Jaeger. This is epidemic sound, and uh, the mus uh, the the musician's name, or at least the musician on the the song, is called Pawan Krishna. But I don't know them. All right. Let's do it. I'm not going to start doing my brummy accent for you guys. It's too much. All right. I'm finding this arch at the back. You know, as we've discussed before, when we're working on a side pose, this is pretty, you could say this is a legitimate side pose. We don't have the axis of the shoulders and the hips. But what we do have is the relationship between the axis going this way and this way and the curvature of the spine. Women, generally speaking, always have to put that caveat in, generally speaking, tend to push the pelvis back more. You tend to get more of an arch here, whereas men tend to have a straighter form coming down. You'll still see a, a transition there. But that's, that's kind of a, an observation you'll see again and again. 
Okay, so that's the supporting leg. I always like to try and find the iliac crest early on, sitting about here. I know my asis is going to be about there. Yeah, okay. And this leg is coming out this way. Okay, placeholder, that'll do for now. Let's find the rib cage. As you can see it sitting in this general area. Stomach coming out like so, then coming down this way down to the pubic bone. You can see the oblique sitting on top of the iliac crest there. And then yeah, coming up our rib cage. And then our sternum is going to be going up this way. Once again, we've got a little bit of hair obscuring here and there, but we'll figure it out. Manubrium's probably about here. Clavicle going up. Head of the humerus. Coming down this way. This arm is sitting back here. Scapula's going to be there. Something like so. other hand. Now, we have one of those situations where we have the hand, her right hand, coming over and supporting this left arm, so to speak, or at least kind of hanging there. We need to make a call on whether we want to put it in, because it, it runs the risk of being quite a distracting form. I'm not sold. I'm going to leave it there for now, but I may omit. So, pectoral coming from the humerus, coming around this way and down in this direction. And we've got the mass of the, the breast sitting about here. Give or take somewhere in there. That'll do for now. The other breast sitting there. Once again, we got this. We got a lot of hair obscuring up up here. So we need to make a decision. So if her okay. The pit of the arm is here. The top of the deltoid's about there. I'm kind of sitting in this general area in here. So, 
Get a sense of the hair is coming down this way. Can't see her face, but it's about there. Somewhere in there, navel is sitting right about here. time. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to start with, <coughs> let's start with this arm and this, this connection point here. the form deltoid as we suggested earlier is here and then it continues its journey up here So, brachioradialis transitioning in, sitting in about here, coming down the form this way. Oh, there we go. Coming down the form this way. And sitting in about here. I want to come across the form. Elbow is lower. Coming into the tricep, sitting in there. I want to be trying su quite subtle with these long passages. You want to keep them quiet but not so quiet that, that they don't really say anything. I 
Ironically, sometimes long lines like this, or the, you know, this side of the arm on both sides there, they can be some of the hardest things to, uh, to do convincingly. Okay, then we have the, yeah, we have a scapula back here. Coming up this way and then into the trapezius. The, the neck in there. So now something like that. Okay, we're getting there. Hope you're all hanging in there okay. Coming in, Get our transition there. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so we got this leg now. Let's uh, let's give it a go. Um, I hope the stream has been good. It has, thanks, potato kitty. Um, do you have any tips for drawing hair? Yes, I do, actually. Um, it comes back to a design language. One thing I will say generally about hair, not that this is any great revelation, but try and work in as fewer groups as possible. Large groups, try and, try and clump, even if it's not what you see. Um, simple shapes, simple divisions are gonna read a lot better than trying to replicate every hair on the head, if that makes sense. This is probably a little oversimplified, but I would sooner it be undersimplified than, than over complex. Um, if that makes sense. Actually, that's terrible grammar. 
You know what I mean. Um, and then when you're grouping, try and think, you know, things like small, medium, and large shapes. You know, you want to stay away from too much symmetry, um, for sure. I would, honestly, I think the probably the best advice I would have, depending obviously what it is that you want to draw, I would look at artists that you admire that draw hair successfully and do an analysis. Um, strip down, really try and look at, okay, they, they've simplified the hair shapes. Um, so exaggerate the form. I think there's a difference maybe between simplification and exaggeration, right? Like, it's not so that we're so much exaggerating, although you can. It's more about grouping, clumping, squint, look at the large shapes. Don't tr try, you're not, there's a tendency drawing hair, people start trying to draw individual hairs. There's a place for that type of style. I'm not saying it's, it, you exclusively shouldn't do it, but I would squint and look at the large shapes, the large masses, blocks of mass that are created by the hair and draw those. Then you can simplify, and, or sorry, then you can go in and, and break that up again. Like, you know, I've got like, for example, here, this is a, by all accounts with like one large space, right? But I could start to, I could start to now start thinking about how I'm going to, um, you know, start to add to this. But already I don't like what I'm doing. Um, you see, I've messed it up. So that's how easy it is to, to, to screw it up. But the idea being small shape, larger shape, smaller clump, medium-sized clump, right? Like trying to get, stay away from like lines all moving um, together. Hair is very easy to, to screw up, honestly. Um, done well, it can look great. Just don't do what I just did. Like I could start to think about, you know, what would I need to do to now to, to salvage this? Now you've got me, you've got me thinking. But I feel like I've already lost something by doing what I did. See, that's how easily it can go, go astray. Probably that has something to do with it. Because on the reference, it's actually, it's quite quiet. And then it gets longer. So I don't think you necessarily want to start your curves too, too early. But I could also fill that all in with tone and hopefully salvage it a little bit. Anyway, not that it really matters for this drawing, but you get the idea. So there's a crease here. I do want to be mindful of. that's in tone. We'll probably throw so a little bit of tone on this one, why not?
Yeah, right, Lulu. Exactly. Starting the curves midway. Look at the reference. Right? Hair doesn't really... Well, unless it's like... You'll find exceptions to this, obviously. But in a pose like this, hair is kind of quiet. In fact, the curves should probably start about here, not even up here. Right, or here. Should probably start about here. Anyway. Can, don't know if I'm going to bother with the pocket of light back here. I'm just going to fill that in with tone. some of that noise out of that hair. blend. That seems like a pretty good place to call it. I think. Cool. This one turned out great. Thanks, Lulu. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Next pause. I think leaving that hand off there was probably a good call. I don't think it's necessary. And I like the, the long quietness of this without it being interrupted by the fingers. So I think that that was probably a good call. Next pose. All right, this should be a fun one. A bit more complex, but it's in a good way. 
I don't think it'll be too bad. Um, where are we at? Just past the hour. All right. Do you do fully clothed poses as well? Um, we've done a few, or maybe not fully clothed. We've done some drapery sessions. We haven't done one in a while, actually. Um, should really give that some thought. A, uh, a drapery session would probably not be a terrible idea. Fully clothed, though, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I've drawn too many fully clothed figures in my day job working in animation. I, 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 it, I don't really have much desire to do it. We did do one session where we did the, this pirate, well, this, um, this model, she was in a pirate outfit. That was a bit of fun. That was fully clothed. Maybe we've done one. One out of 123. And then maybe about three or four drapery sessions. All right, clock is reset. I'd like to think this one will go a little bit quicker than the last one. Um, Aditya says, I'm focused on your line. Please give me some ideas. Everyone wants to know about the line, the thick and the thin and all of that. Honestly, I'd say it's the last stage of development. Style is the last stage of development, right? If you want to break it down into stages, it's the way I was taught it, was you have gesture, then you have mass, volume and mass, usually in the form of simple shapes, cylinders, blocks, spheres. Then you have anatomy, then you have light and tone, and finally comes style. Style should be the last thing that you uh, you work on uh, as a as something that you work, you know you do. There's not really much to tell you. A lot of it, I would say, seventy percent of it comes from holding the pencil on the side and knowing how to um, when to press harder, when to tilt, when to push. You'll notice a lot, Aditya, this is interesting, and this is something I didn't realize. I'll just do a quick fake drawing here. Okay, so let's just say we're drawing a figure, something like this, right? Okay. I didn't realize I was, I, or it's not that I didn't realize, but it was brought to my attention by someone else that was trying to, I think, trying to crack the code, so to speak. Um, a lot of the time, I'm creating, I, I draw, when I'm doing my rough pass, I tend to draw in this direction. When I'm doing my dark pass, I'm pushing, pushing away and kind of into the paper, right? I will do it coming down the form, don't get me wrong, like, you know, I will, I will do it in this direction, but I will sp spend as much time working in this direction as I will in, uh, you know, the other. So maybe that's something to keep in mind. There we go. All right. Let's draw. I may have to do a pencil sharpening at some point, but let's uh, let's see how far we can get before that eventuality. Reset the clock, and we're on. Shoulders. What I like about poses like this is we can 
we can draw a pretty big. Because there's no real like long limbs for us to contend with, right? shortened arm coming this way. This hand coming back like so. Pectoral. Now, look how high her knee is, sitting right about here, right? And then that tibia coming down this way, kind of something like that. Ankle is sitting about here. the inner thigh outer here then going up this way obviously connecting to the knee rest is here She's got the handle of this katana, whatever it is, sword, ankle. Foot. Then this leg. knees about there and then this leg is this tibia and this lower leg kind of we want we want to try and keep that rhythm along the long rhythmical lines this leg is obviously coming towards us then the calf is going away from us. Nice compression right here. This hand's actually about here. I won't move it.
Hmm. Alright, don't want to roll over the other drawings. I need to come over here. got compressed poses like this or you know like some hidden forms like for example this legs obscuring the bottom of the pelvis and you know this leg and etc um, it really is important to uh, you know be working in stages and not not working on half the drawings in, in the tonal stage and the other half is, you know, um, still at the diagrammatical stage. Because so much of drawing, I think, is really about organizing your thought process. And I think working in stages is so incredibly important and trying at least to be done with one stage before you move on to the next. Like there will always be little things that will kind of be on the to-do list, but it's a tendency, you know, in some ways this is kind of a complex pose just because there's a lot of elements close together. Um, <coughs> so, you really want to have your, you know, you want to have all your ducks in a row before you move on to the next, the next part, so to speak. Um, Potato Kitty says, that thing with the line as well, the cut of the lead also helps with the line control, right? Um, here's the thing, it's, okay. Time for a close-up. I will not forget to put the camera back. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. But can you see there's like a flat edge now on my pencil? Right on this top edge, like right here on this side. It's kind of a flat edge that's developed as I've been doing the drawing. That flat edge actually becomes quite useful when I go in to doing the, the, that final line. And it probably does serve its purpose in the dynamics of the line, um, just by virtue of doing the, the, you know, the underdrawing first. You can see, I don't know if you can see it here too. I'm probably not zoomed in quite enough, but hopefully you get the point. Because these start off very cone-like and then as you're drawing, you inevitably, even though I try to rotate them, you inevitably end up with flat edges. And then you can use that flat edge almost kind of like a knife, in, you know, in painting. And um, you can use it. In saying that, you could also get it with a fresh pencil that you haven't, you, you could still get it with this. Like, so I can't say that that's the completely contributing factor. It's tricky. I don't know, just an observation. See, I zoomed back. Didn't forget that time. Um, okay, let's, let's get into it. I think it's time. Now, where do I want to start is the question. I think I'm going to start with this edge. And for no real reason, there's no kind of formula to this. Well, I generally start, at least being a lefty, I start on the right, just to try and not smudge the drawing all to hell. Um, something like that. 
Now, I don't know if I, you know, the inclination would be to go to hop to this arm, but I actually don't think I will. I'm going to be jumping around a bit here because we've got a lot of forms that are kind of competing in, to one degree or another for our attention. Um, okay, let's, let's see this. I think this is about in the right place. How do I want to handle this? One thing I love about foreshortened legs like this is they inevitably end up giving you really interesting shapes. Okay, so we got that, but I want to find this calf actually. Once again, it's kind of important. Um, It is, it's starting over here. Something like that. Then we come around the form. Something like that. This will all make sense eventually, he said. <laughs> Maybe. Let's find this leg, because this is also pretty crazy, a lot going on. There's a point here I want to be mindful of, okay. Let's come back down here and find our ankle. Let's come across the form. The exterior ankle bone is generally, or not generally, it is lower than the interior ankle bone, the high point here. So you, once again, it's a perfect opportunity for overlap and for us to break symmetry. Everyone's very quiet today, which is okay, just, just saying.
Okay. So. So actually this this foot is maybe a little bit lower here. Okay. Ankle is there. Or heel, I should say. Yeah, it's okay, guys. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I just, when the chat goes too quiet, honestly, I start to wonder if I've disconnected. Um, <laughs> Like, you know, if like several minutes pass, you just start going, hmm, am I even still live? Because if not, I'm going to go get a cup of tea. You know. All right. Those two legs were kind of important for me, at least in my... Yeah, this pencil is no more than a nub at this point. So that is out. That one is out. Oh, look at that fresh one. Um, why are they important? Well, they're obviously they're at the front of the of the form, and I don't know. They just it felt to me like I needed to address those before before moving on. Now I feel like I can go on into the torso with a little bit more confidence. Okay. So now we've got this arm, and my arm is kind of in the wrong position relative to the reference. It's more out here. Okay, well let's change it. We'll just do it straight and dark, huh? Let's live dangerously. And hopefully not regret it. Let's come across the form this way. Sorry, when I don't have an underdrawing, I do want to just make sure my proportions are correct. This hand is going up this way, into there. And that'll all work out fine. So neck, trapezius, shoulder. like that. Oh, it always looks a bit bland, doesn't it, without the underdrawing? Okay. All right, let's keep going. Pectoral, peeking out, obviously coming from the humerus, peeking out this way, and sitting in here.
probably find a few of the planes of the knees, just very loosely. Once again, I want to find space fillers. All right, let's do this for shortened arm. Oh, there's a tea conversation going on. What's that? What's going on here? Uh, um, da, 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 sorry, I want to read some comments here. Little toe tucks in. Yes, it does. <laughs> People are entranced by your drawings. <laughs> no one wants to talk. Maybe that's it. Well, thank you, Donna. That's that's a nice way to think about it. Um, yeah, this is the thing. I could just be literally talking to myself for half an hour, which is a problem. Keep meaning to ask, says Margot, do you brew loose tea, use tea bags, and if so, what kind? Just curious what a Brit really likes. Okay, let's go. Now you're asking the serious questions the important questions. No, I do not use brew loose tea. <coughs> Cannot imagine a more tedious uh, process than brewing loose tea, um, or messy process. I use a tea bag called Yorkshire Gold. Yorkshire Gold, it is the gold standard of tea bags. Forget your PG tips, okay? rubbish. Yorkshire gold or bust. Now, there is another tea bag. Oh, now what's it called? I'm forgetting the name, so it clearly isn't important enough to remember. Just Yorkshire tea. It's all you need to know. It's, it's the one. It is a little bit more expensive and it's absolutely worth it, except no substitutes. Um, it's an English breakfast tea. I'm not into that Earl Grey or any of that stuff. Um, you just can't go wrong. Oh, my last sharp pencil. Well, I have a couple in these holders. That's unfortunate. Doesn't bode well for the rest of the session. Anyway, um, so there you go. This is the only thing you need to know about tea. And I drink far too much tea. Yes, I leave the tea bag in. Sometimes, sometimes I take it out. But if I feel like the brew needs to go that extra, um, you know, few percent, I'll leave the tea bag in. Yes, I'll drink tea as it goes cold. Sometimes I'll throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds. I know, blasphemous. What are you going to do? I don't know about Brits, but when I discovered I can put milk in my tea, my mind was blown. It's the only way to drink it. Come on, Lulu. Of course. Just till, wait till you find out about honey. I do not use sugar or honey in my tea. I know some people are into that. If you're gonna use a sweetener, honey's probably a good one. It's certainly more flavorful than sugar. Um, but it's funny, you know, my, my dad used to have sugar in his tea. So growing up when I was like, you know, a little kid, my dad would always put a couple of sugars in my tea. And I used to think nothing of it. Then when I was about five, I went to a friend's house for a play date and I was offered a cup of tea and they didn't put sugar in their tea and I was too embarrassed to say anything so I just drank it without the sugar and I loved it. And I went home and I told my dad, no more, no more sugar in the tea. And that was the last time I ever put sugar in my tea. So there you go, TMI. <laughs> okay, deltoid. Don't like, you know, here's the thing. Um, 
when you go to you know you go to say like an Indian household you'll, or you go to India you'll obviously you'll be offered chai and chai is they just put all the sugar in the tea it's ridiculously sweet and I've actually asked for chai before without sugar and I got a very strange look um, and they actually they did I did get it once without and it's it, it's much more just like a black tea then it's like a regular tea which I found I could drink but I can't drink chai if it's got the sugar in it I'd sooner just drink water um, Wow, Donna, look at you throwing out the, the deets before, uh, before I, after I've just said them, but obviously um, you, I didn't read, I'm just reading your message now. You are right, Yorkshire tea, perfect. See, you know stuff. Um, <laughs> I, as a Brit, was brought up drinking tea and I like Tetley. But it's got to have milk. Okay, fair enough. I didn't know you were a Brit, Donna. There you go. Actually, I did know that from before. Yeah, okay. You're a Tetley drinker. That's unfortunate, but I'll let you away with it this once. Um, no one has time for loose tea. Yorkshire gold, exactly. Emmy knows what's up. Oh, you le you're in the UK. All right, look at this, We've, the tea conversation that Margot started. <laughs> Looks like the arm coming towards, but also moving to the side. Yeah, it's kind of what it's doing. Um, b -b -b PG tips, right? Sorry, Jaeger. No, you're going to have to leave now. PG Tips is an inferior tea. Look, you know, you're in LA, or LA adjacent, you know, I get it. You drive down to World Market, PG Tips, it's all they have. I get it. You drink what you, what you have available to you, but no, PG Tips is, is not the one. Now, if you ever see Yorkshire tea in, in like an English shop or whatever, do yourself a favor. The runner up to Yorkshire tea wasn't even worth remembering. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, I've got to look it up because I need to, it's only right. I can't believe I can't remember the name of it. Um, I type in Irish tea and I get Irish rugby team. Barry's tea, sorry. Okay, that would be the only, Barry's gold <coughs> is really the only other one that I would, I, would, I would buy. And I used to think Barry's gold was the gold standard until I had Yorkshire gold. And then it was like, all right, I don't know why they put gold after each, you know, thing. Um, <coughs> and once I had Yorkshire gold, um, look, Barry's is a very respectable cup of tea, and to all my Irish brothers and sisters, I, I respect Barry's, but it's not Yorkshire gold. It's just not. You know it, I know it. We can stop pretending. Um, thanks for all the theology. Yeah, you know, it's like I'll drink one cup of coffee a day, I cannot drink more generally speaking, but tea, it's all day. Um, there you go. All right. Usually kids would hate the bitter of tea without sugar. You see tea too, I don't think tea is bitter. I really don't. I think it's one of the mildest drinks you, you could get, honestly. But fair enough. I, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, right or wrong as it may be. 
I'm messing. Um, da -da -da. Likewise with the Yorkshire, I won't hold it against you. Oh, Donna's throwing down. Fair enough. We will agree to disagree, Donna. It's okay. Um, we're tea deprived here. You are a uh, uh, Jaeger. Uh, I think many of you know, but for some of you who don't, I lived in LA for 25 years. And the tea situation over there, like try, try going into your local supermarket and, and getting a good, a good tea, forget it. So you'd have to go to specialty shops that would import from the UK. And when you picked up that very, very expensive bag of tea bags, you know, that was, that was the stash. That was the one to hold on to. Um, man, oh man, was it expensive in the LA. Outrageous what you'd pay for a box of tea compared to here. Same with like, well, it was obviously imported, so. Um, this chat has good energy. Tea. All right. What else can we say? I think now we've, we've gone full circle. In the Balkans, we call tea chai also, yeah. It's, it's not even you tea usually. You got mint, thyme, okay, yeah. Well, I think tea, right, can refer to like anything that you brew in a cup of hot water, essentially, right? Like a herbal tea, exactly. Um, I always love the boldness of coffee. Can you find that profile in tea? No, Noah, but th that's the point, is you don't want, like, look, you can uh, brew a cup of strong tea, but the whole point is you drink tea from the moment you wake up till you go to sleep. So if it was as bold as coffee all day, I think you'd be off your head. Didn't have actual tea until I was in my 20s. Wow, Lulu. Well, you know what? I didn't have rice until I was about 19. So that go figure. Uh, <laughs> exactly, Margo. Look at, the, look at what we're doing. I'm not even drawing. The clock's ticking by and I'm just sitting here reading about tea. Uh, okay. Where do I go with this drawing? That's the question. Do I want to add tone? It's kind of a complex lighting job, this one. Um, in saying that, I think a little bit of light will maybe bring clarity. So let's, my pencil will, my pencil will play along. I'll, I'll give a little bit of core shadow here and there. And we'll just get a bit of, a bit of light going on. See, you found, you found my weakness. You want to distract me away from the drawing. Good tea conversation is what it'll take. I'm actually, this is a less than ideal pencil to be trying to do a tonal pass with. But that's where we're at. But I think if we can throw a little bit, and not in there, if we can throw a little bit into tone, I do think it will help sort the trees from the forest, so to speak. So even doing that kind of starts to separate things out and you're like, oh, okay. Rather than just a mass of diagrammatical lines.
Okay. Okay, so I just need to describe enough hair for some of this to make sense. And then this is coming down. Now time-wise, we are a little bit up against it as we move into the last couple of poses, so we're gonna, we're gonna speed them up. That's what we're gonna do. pose took way too long but that's because we started talking about tea so that's what happens yeah I'm just gonna leave that hand because and that one otherwise I'll be at this drawing another 10 minutes do you think pulling out the light in there would probably be a good idea. Just to show the edge of her form. All right, let's move on. Take care, Donna. See you again soon. All right. And best of luck with that tomorrow. That's rough. Be thinking of you. Take care. All right, we have a couple of, we have a few minutes left. How many poses do we have left? Two poses. All right, we'll do two fives. We will call it a day. All right, guys, let's do this. Two fives. Cinco minutos. Quick sip of cold tea. All right. And these are going to be hard fives. And what I mean by that is time wise, probably they are not the easiest poses either. But let's have a bit of fun. Ilya Crest. It's like doing something like this. sitting on there.
holding the sword going down that way. Let's see. Three and a half. Loads of time. There's our five. All right, well. What the hell am I doing there? God, well, that's weird. I moved the head, but I don't know. Anyway, done. Last pose. Take care, potato. Gonna dip. Fair enough. Round off topic mention. Eye droops are top tier computer work and or drawing eye drops eye drops yes yes it's dry eyes are it's, it's a real issue um can be especially staring at computer screens all day all right guys last pose last five quick sip of tea let's do it This is kind of a 
Interesting pose. It's a little like yeah, they're like I don't know what what am I trying to say? I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Kind of like there's a certain awkwardness to it, if that makes sense, which I kind of found appealing. And I think it's got something to do with the legs and yeah. Leg coming towards us, sitting in somewhere like that. Yeah, the legs are definitely doing something kind of awkward, but in a good way, if that makes sense. Just the way she's kind of hunched over. And this hand is about here. hand coming across this arm, meeting up with this one. Yeah, it's a weird pose. Okay, so oblique is sitting about there. We just see the peak of it there. Yeah. This leg is actually over here, so let's refine that. of the pose is catching up with me. I 
And there's our five. Uh, okay. I feel like I've got to explain just a little bit what's going on here. She's holding this knife coming out this way. Okay, guys. Now I'm just cheating. I'll stop. All right, done. Interesting pose. The legs are rather confusing with the knee placement. Yeah, 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 the, the, the whole pose is a little bit odd. I haven't really captured it. I want to, I want to do this with my drawing. I think that helps. I don't know what I was thinking with this, with this line right here. Oh, using an eraser. What's going on? That helps a little bit. My leg placement is so weird. Ah, whatever. Take care of me. Please remember to, if, if you care to, please hit the like button on your way out the door. Kids, it's been fun. It has been fun. That was, that was a good session. Good way to end the drawing week, at least for right now. Maybe I'll draw tomorrow, let's see. Um, in the meantime, I will be back for sure on Monday. Same time, same place. You know the drill. Um, yeah, please, if you wouldn't mind liking, maybe subscribing if you're not a subscriber, that would be very useful. And uh, maybe hit the notification bell as well. Apparently that's a thing that will help. Um, it will help notify you of things anyway, because things come up. Um, please go check out the website. Got stuff going on over there. You can see some of my drawings. Um, there's bits and pieces, some opinions, some thoughts in the blog. Um, you know, there's, there's more than just a pretty face going on here. <laughs> um, guys, thanks a lot. I'm going to get out of here before I dig myself a proverbial hole. Um, have a wonderful weekend. And please take care of yourselves and those, those loved ones around you. Um, give them a hug. All right. Take care, guys. I will see you next week. Good luck. <laughs>